The garden can be a very confusing part of Hypixel Skyblock, which lacks a proper, in-depth introduction. All of the guides I've seen on YouTube only provide guidance for what items to get for farming, but never actually explain the fundamentals of how the garden actually works. So I've put together this 10-part guide for anyone that finds themselves lost in the garden. Timestamps for each topic will be in the description of the video, as well as on the video's progress bar. Feel free to jump to any part of the video that you'd like to learn about, or if you'd like to watch it all the way through, I've ordered the topics in a way that I think makes the most sense. Alright, let's get right into it, starting off with figuring out what the garden actually is. So, what is the garden? The garden is a secondary private island, with a main focus on the farming skill. You can build farms for all 10 crops, fill visitor produce orders, mindlessly farm for countless hours, collect pests, and compete in farming contests. This is grossly oversimplifying the garden, but that's most of what you'll be doing during your time here. The only requirement to enter the garden is Skyblock level 5, which then a stranger will appear on your private island. Said stranger's name is Sam, and she inherited a farm from her father. Unfortunately, she's not very good at farming, self-described as having two left thumbs. Sam is on your island to ask for your help on the farm, and once you agree to help, you'll be brought to your garden along with Sam. From here on out, the garden is yours. Sam never explicitly says this, but she basically gave the ownership of the garden to you entirely. The first thing Sam wants you to do is bring her 25 wheat. The small patch of wheat nearby makes that super convenient. Next, you'll find Sam inside the barn next to the composter. She'll introduce you to the machine and ask you to purchase a biofuel from the desk's Skymart menu for 20,000 coins. Alright, so now we've been shown two points of interest, the composter and the desk. We'll talk more about these two devices later. Using the biofuel, fill up the composter with fuel to make it start generating compost. It won't take long. Take the compost out and open up the desk menu again. Select the configure plot button and purchase any plot for one compost. Next, Sam will want us to clean up the plot we've just purchased. Every time a plot is bought, we have to clear out all the obstacles it has. Sam will give you her scythe, which will help you clear the plot more efficiently. This will take a while, but you just gotta push through it. Once the plot is completely clean, Sam will ask for another 100 wheat so she can bake you some bread. After Sam gives you 5 bread, she gets the idea of opening up a stand to attract visitors to your garden. This stand will end up playing a vital role in your progression. Go over and meet her at the newly opened stand and make Make sure you still have that bread that Sam gave you. Jerry from your private island will visit you at your garden stand and offer some goods in return for five bread. How convenient, you've got five bread. Once you accept Jerry's offer, the garden tutorial will be complete and you'll be free to do whatever you like. There's only a few main points of interest on the garden, but it's important that you know what they are, where to find them, and how they work. The first, and most obvious, important area is the giant barn in the middle of your garden. Inside the barn, you'll find three things that are of interest. The desk, the composter, and the visitor stand, all things you've seen before. Outside of the barn plot, take a look around and you'll be looking at all of the possible plots available for purchase. Eventually, all of these plots will be filled with farms, but we're a little while off from that. And that's all. We'll get to the specifics about how each of these areas work, but for now it's just important to note that they're here. The only garden-specific currency is copper. Copper works similar to coins, bits, and gems, meaning it's not a physical item, but rather a statistic. The only way to gain copper is accepting visitor offers, and it can be used for a wide variety of things on the garden. Copper is very important, and you're gonna need a lot of it. The first garden statistic I want to mention is your garden level. The maximum garden level is 15, and you can increase your level by accepting visitor offers and reaching crop milestones. You unlock many new things for each garden level, such as new crop upgrades and skyblock XP. Most people would agree that the most important statistic on the garden is your farming fortune. Farming fortune is one of the many gathering stats in Skyblock. Every bit of farming fortune you have acts as a percent chance to get double crop drops when farming. For example, having 100 farming fortune will guarantee you double crop drops, but having 101 farming fortune will add a 1% chance to receive triple crop drops. I'll put a better example on screen now that I stole from the official Hypixel Skyblock wiki page. There are tons and tons of ways to increase your farming fortune, with both permanent and temporary methods. Also, note that all of your farming fortune is completely disabled when on your main private island, so farming on the garden is ideal. Bonus pest chance is a pretty niche statistic, but it does play a decent role in your garden progression. Each bonus pest chance acts as a percent chance for another pest to appear when one is spawned. If you've never heard of a pest, don't stress on it 
too much, it's not that important yet. There are very few ways to increase this stat, just know that it exists. Finally, crop growth is a statistic that isn't personal, but rather applies per garden, since it scales exclusively with your garden level. Crop growth speeds up how fast all crops will grow in your garden, and it increases by plus 10% per garden level, for a maximum of plus 150% crop growth. The desk is a station located in the barn that allows you to view your garden level, the plots menu, your crop upgrades, the sky mart menu, your garden milestones, and your barn skins. Your garden level is the little sunflower located at the top middle of your desk menu, and it shows your current garden level, your progress to the next level, and the rewards for said levels. Your garden level can also be viewed from your skills tab in the skyblock menu under the farming category. It's just a little sunflower near the bottom. On the far left of the desk menu, you can configure your garden's plots. When clicked, it opens a 5x5 grid showing all 24 total plots. The center plot is your barn, and it cannot be transformed into a regular farming plot. You can view, edit, and purchase plots from this menu. Keep in mind that each plot bought will always cost more than the previous. Here is a visual that shows the different groups of plots. The green blocks represent the cheaper ones, and the red blocks show the more expensive plots. The further the plot is from your barn, the harder it is to clean up as well. Going back to the plot configuration menu, you might notice a few different icons. If a plot's icon is red glass, it cannot be purchased, and you'll need to buy an adjacent plot first. If the plot is shown as a wooden button, that plot is purchasable as long as you have enough compost to do so. If the plot is orange glass, that means it has been purchased but is unclean. The plot cannot be edited in any way until it is 100% clean. And finally, the green glass on a plot represents a fully clean plot that you own, and it's ready to be edited. You could either construct your own custom farm or select a preset. If you decide to build your own farm manually, note that many blocks are disabled, such as the teleport and launch pads. Also note that all presets will require their respective materials to plant the crops. Wheat will need seeds, carrots will need carrots, you get the point. You can also choose to copy one of your plot's blocks and paste them all onto another plot. This proves to be very useful when building your own farms. Copying a plot will carry over everything besides the seeds and crops, and any non-crop block broken on a pasted plot will not drop to prevent item duplication. You can also teleport to any previously purchased plot just by right-clicking it on the grid from the configuration menu. Alright, back to the desk menu, you can view your crop upgrades just to the right of the configure plots button. These are individual crop upgrades that increase your farming fortune for a specific crop when upgraded. You gain plus 5 farming fortune per level for that crop, and the upgrades are purchased using copper. These upgrades can get really expensive really fast. The limit is 9 levels per crop, for a maximum of plus 45 farming fortune for every crop. The requirements to purchase higher tiers of crop upgrades unlock at certain garden levels as well. Next, we have the Skymart menu. This is the same place where you bought the biofuel from during Sam's tutorial, so this should look pretty familiar. There is an incredibly large assortment of items that can be bought with coins, copper, or gems, but most items will cost copper. There's fuel, loads of tools, a few enchanted books, some equipment, item reforges, vacuums, cool barn skins, and more. Keep in mind that some items will have a garden level requirement to buy or use. You can also view your garden milestones from your desk menu, which tracks your general completion of the most basic aspects of the garden. There are two categories in the garden milestones tab, crop milestones and visitor milestones. They both give farming XP, garden XP, and skyblock XP when milestones are reached. Crop milestones are met by farming a specific amount of a crop, with a maximum tier of 46 for each unique crop. Visitor milestones can be reached by both accepting unique visitors offers and total visitor offers accepted. The maximum unique offers tier is 9 as of early 2024, and the maximum total offers accepted milestone is 10,000. The last menu in the desk is the barn skins menu. Clicking on this will bring up a list of every barn skin you own and allow you to select any of them. Barn skins can be bought with gems or copper depending on the skin, and they can also be put on the auction house meaning you can both buy and sell them for coins. The composter is used to generate compost, which takes a combination of organic crops and fuel. You can insert any kind of crop, including enchanted crops, as well as any item that provides fuel. It's important to note that the creation of compost will take time. It's not like crafting where the product is instantly made, so consider keeping it running at all times. The machine is located in the barn next to the desk. Interacting with it opens the composter menu, which you would have seen during Sam's tutorial as well. You are first greeted with two vertical meters. The one on the left side is the organic matter counter, which 
increases when crops are inserted in the composter. And the meter on the right is the fuel counter, which increases when any kind of fuel is inserted in the composter. Looking at the bottom of the menu, to the left and right of the exit button, you can choose to insert a bulk amount of crops or fuel. It works with sacks, and it can be a big time saver. The middle of the composter is where you can collect compost stored in the machine, and directly under is where the composter upgrades menu is located. There are a total of five different upgrades for the composter. Composter speed, which decreases the time it takes to generate compost by 20% per tier. Multi-drop increases the chance to produce an extra compost by 3% per tier. Fuel cap will increase how much fuel the composter can hold by 30,000 per tier. Organic matter cap, similar to fuel cap, increases how many crops the composter can hold by 20,000 organic matter per tier. And cost reduction, which reduces the amount of organic matter and fuel needed to generate a compost by 1% per tier. These upgrades cost a large amount of copper and crops, with each upgrade requiring a different type of crop. Remember when you first opened your stand with Sam and made your first deal with Jerry? It turns out Jerry isn't the only NPC that's interested in doing business with you. After a set amount of time, a visitor is selected to show up at your garden stand. The base time it takes for a visitor to appear is 15 minutes. The wait time between visitor appearances can be reduced by having served a large amount of unique visitors and while actively farming. If more than one visitor is on your garden, they will form a line in front of your stand. A maximum of five visitors can be in line at once. These guys will literally stand here for Forever if you let them. The dedication of these NPCs is unmatched. Most visitors require you to interact with them outside of the garden in order for them to have a chance to show up, and some even require a high garden level, such as Maeve and the Spaceman. The amount of crops that a visitor requests will scale higher with your garden level, but the rewards will scale up as well. Generally, the further you progress in the garden, the more intense the visitor's orders will get. Visitors will appear with one of five rarities, with the rarity being tied to the visitor themselves. That means that a legendary Jerry will all always be legendary. The rarities are uncommon, rare, legendary, mythic, and special. Higher rarity visitors will have better offers with a more expensive request. All visitors offer farming XP, garden XP, copper, and if a cookie buff is active, bits. Keep in mind that all of those rewards will also scale with your garden level and the visitor's rarity. The rarest visitor in the game is called the Spaceman. He is the only special tier visitor, and his order is by far the most difficult to fulfill. He can ask for any crop, and the amount will always be 1 billion coins worth. I shouldn't have to say, that's a lot of coins. In return, he offers the Space Helmet, which is a special tier cosmetic. The Space Helmet is considered an ultimate trophy of farming. Visitors also have a small chance to offer one of three unique items the flowering bouquet, the green bandana, or the overgrown grass. The flowering bouquet is a reforge for equipment pieces that gives extra farming fortune and has a 2% chance to appear in any visitor's offer. The green bandana is a pet item that gives more farming fortune for every garden level you have and has a 0.4% chance to appear in any visitor with a rarity of rare or above. And the overgrown grass is the rarest of the three, being a reforge for armor that gives farming fortune and has a 0.1% chance to appear in any visitor's offer. These are RNG drops make it worth checking what every visitor has to offer, as some of these items can be worth millions upon millions of coins. All crops in the garden have a rare chance to drop certain rare farming materials, changing depending on what crop you're farming as well as what armor set you have on. Croppies have a rare chance to drop when farming wheat, carrots, or potatoes while wearing melon armor. Squash has a very rare chance to drop when farming pumpkins, melons, or cocoa beans while wearing crappie armor. And fermentos have a ridiculously rare chance to drop when farming sugarcane, cacti, mushrooms, or netherworts while wearing squash armor. Fermento armor, which is the best farming armor in the game, combines all three of these previous full set abilities, allowing you to drop crappies, squash, and fermentos. These three rare crops can be used for crafting items, selling to an NPC or bazaar for coins, or put in the composter to be turned into organic matter. Pests are the only type of mob that spawns on the garden, and their purpose is to deter the player from going completely AFK while farming using a macro, which is bannable. Don't try it, you will get caught. Or, if you prefer to look at these kinds of things in a brighter way, you can think of pests as a way to make farming more interactive and engaging. Starting at garden level 5, pests will occasionally appear on any random plots you have unlocked. You can choose to make them spawn more with items like the sprayinator and stats like bonus pest chance, or you could choose to decrease how often they spawn with 
with pest repellent from the Skymart menu. Note that pest repellents only last an hour and they cost copper every single time. When four or more pests are on your garden, your total farming fortune will start to deplete, scaling lower with the amount of pests alive. There can be up to eight pests on your garden at a time, which reduces your total farming fortune by 75%. Don't worry though, because once all of the pests are ridden, you recover all of the lost farming fortune. So we've established why pests can be bad and why we need to find a way to get rid of them. Pests can only be damaged with vacuums, and a vacuum can be claimed for free from the Philip NPC. You can upgrade your vacuum in the Skymart menu for copper. Pests stored in the vacuum can also be turned into Philip for a temporary boost to your farming fortune that lasts 30 minutes. The farming fortune boost scales with how many pests you've turned in. You can choose to turn in a maximum of 40 vacuumed pests at once, giving you a plus 200 farming fortune boost for 30 minutes. I suggest turning in your pests right before participating in a farming contest to maximize your farming fortune and your placement. There are 10 different types of pests on the garden, which all drop unique things. Some fly and some crawl, but they're all defeated using the vacuum. At garden level 5, the first first five pests will start appearing on your plots. The first pest in question being the fly. Flies drop wheat and they have a rare chance to drop an item called beady eyes. Beady eyes is a reforge that can be applied to vacuums. Crickets will drop carrots and have a rare chance to drop a chirping stereo. This item is used to upgrade high tier vacuums. Locusts drop potatoes and will rarely drop a sunder six enchant book. This is the highest tier of the sunder enchant in the game. Rats always drop pumpkins along with a rare chance to drop a legendary rat pet, just like the rats in the hub. Mosquitoes drop sugar cane, and a rare chance to drop an item called Clipped Wings. Clipped Wings is another reforge for vacuums that doubles its damage output. At garden level 6, earthworms will start spawning. They drop melons and have a rare chance to drop the earthworms favorite book. It's an item that adds damage to vacuums and can be applied up to 5 times. Garden level 7 unlocks mites, which drop cacti. Mites also have a rare chance to drop an item called the atmospheric filter, which is a rare accessory that changes its perk every skyblock season. Reaching garden level 8 will start spawning moths, which drop cocoa beans and have a rare chance to drop a wriggling larva. The larva can be consumed up to five times for permanent stat buffs. Each consumption gives plus two bonus pest chance and plus five skyblock XP. We've gone too far. Eating larva for skyblock XP, really? At garden level nine, slugs will start to spawn in your garden, which drop mushrooms. They have a rare chance to drop the slug pets at epic and legendary rarities. And finally, at garden level 10, beetles will spawn in your garden plots. They drop nether warts and also have a rare chance to drop a pest terminator enchanted Book. When applied to armor, it gives farming fortune and bonus pest chance. The chances to drop the rare items from pests are not multiplied by magic find like everything else in Skyblock, but they instead scale with your farming fortune. On the garden, your magic find stat is useless, and your farming fortune is what matters. Though, the farming fortune is six times less effective as magic find would be. The farming fortune drop rate buff applies to all pest drops that are a 5% base chance or lower. The formula for this is really complicated, just know that the more farming fortune you have, the more rare drops you'll get. Wow, that was a lot of information to take in. Realistically, most of us are only farming in the garden to make some money, and all you need for that is to build the best farm and obtain the most farming fortune possible. But some others are just in it for the Skyblock XP. Here's how you can milk every single bit of Skyblock leveling juice from the garden. Reaching max garden level 15 will give you 140 XP. Farming skill level 60 will give you a whopping 1000 XP. Unlocking every plot in the garden will grant you 120 XP. Scoring at least gold in all of Jacob's farming contests will earn you 100 XP. Consuming all five wriggling larva will give you 25 xp. Reaching crop milestone average 46, which just means that all your crop milestones are maxed, will give you 460 xp. Getting all 10 crop upgrades to tier 9 grants you 90 xp. Accepting the current maximum amount of unique visitors gives you 96 xp. Accepting a total of 10,000 visitors will give you 90 xp. Getting all 5 composter upgrades to tier 25 will provide 205 xp. And all permanent upgrades in Anita shop will give you 205 xp. Adding that all up, you can get a total of 2,000 1,631 Skyblock XP, or 26 and a half Skyblock levels. I hope I did my math right. Not to mention, the XP gained from collections, minions, accessories, pet score, and pest bestiary could also be added onto the previous number for even more levels. Only then can you say you've completely maxed out the garden. I hope you found this guide useful. Like, subscribe, all the above, and I'm sure I'll see you soon.